Hello, my name is Chris Krulin, and today I'm going to talk to you about treatment of osteochondral lesions with a new technique called intraosseous bioplasty. So first, let's review what an osteochondral lesion is. In the past, the focus has been on the healing of cartilage, and we felt that once there was a stable cartilage repair construct, that the bone would be able to remodel on its own. But what we've learned is that the talus remodels very slowly and people can develop bone marrow lesions that cause residual pain and can inhibit a patient's rehabilitation. So we need to address the bone as well as the cartilage. For example, here's a patient 12 months out after microfracture, continuing the complaint of pain. An MRI reveals edema in the bone and there is obvious signs as to why they are not rehabilitating or why they are having continued pain. We are waiting for the bone to turn over and it doesn't have the normal capacity to heal. So let's review subchondral bone. Subchondral bone supports the articular cartilage. It absorbs most of the joint reactive forces and distributes it throughout the joint. It responds to Wolf's laws with force. And once injured, it needs to heal. Therefore, it needs a blood supply and growth factors to promote that healing. Now let's review the pathology of a talus osteochondral injury. So the injury occurs to the bone and the cartilage. A normal healing response occurs. Sometimes this response fails and you start to get fibrosis and neovascularization instead of new bone formation. Over time, this leads to subchondral edema and cyst formation. And then a patient presents in clinic with pain. You get an MR and it shows a bone marrow lesion. So if we look closer at the subchondral bone and a bone marrow lesion, histology shows necrosis, bone fibrosis, and decreased mineralization. The MR shows increased signal, and this most likely is due to a change in the pressure gradient from the synovial fluid invading the bone. Now, if we look at this image, an arthroscopy picture on the left, you can see that there is a cartilage defect. Now, if we do our probe, the lesion is shown to be unstable and therefore it should be removed. And once it is removed, you can see that there is good subchondral bone, good cartilage, and healthy trabecular bone surrounding the lesion. However, there is fibrosis and unhealthy tissue present. So we need to use biology to treat the bone edema and aid in the repair of the osteochondral defect. So this gives us our comprehensive osteochondral defect treatment plan. Intraosseous bioplasty for core decompression and biologic enhancement of the lesion, and then biocartilage to treat the cartilage lesion. Thank you for your time.